Let's go to Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16. I'll, I'll put it on the on the on the church page for you, okay, so you can listen. All right, let's look at what the Lord has for us today. Hebrews chapter four, the verse number sixteen. Hebrews four sixteen. Are you there? Read in the New King James and read in the Amplified version. Hallelujah. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may find, we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. In the Amplified Version, let us therefore fearlessly and confidently and boldly draw near to the throne of grace, the throne of God's unmerited favor to us sinners, that we may receive mercy for our failures and find grace to help in good time for every need uh, appropriate help and well-timed help coming just when we need it hallelujah this morning i want to tell you or talk to you about help in time of need help in time of need if you live under this sun and you live uh, in our day, especially in this part of our world, and not just here, everywhere, but it's quite typical in this part of our world, uh, developing economy, that need is very present with us. It's part of life. It's part of life. And uh, we need many things. We need many things. There are needs in our lives. And there's an open invitation. There's a stand to us that if there's need, come to me. Hallelujah. If there's a need, if there's a need in anybody's life today, the Lord sent me to tell you that come to him. Hallelujah. We just want to learn how to come to him and what to expect when we come to him. Hallelujah. Needs are present with us always. We need wisdom. We need we need a lot of things. We need some of them, they are even material things. We need a passion for the Lord. We need a, 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 a stable prayer life. You need a Bible study life. You need a good stable devotion life. You need you need understanding. Hallelujah. You need your the eyes of your understanding to be enlightened. Hallelujah. You want to live a godly life. You want to produce the fruit of righteousness in your life. You also need a job. And there are a whole bunch of material needs in your life. If there's any need like that, the Lord said we should come. Tell your neighbor, come. Come. But how should we come? He said, let us come boldly. I want us to examine three words in this text. That gives us a good perspective into what the writer of Hebrews I believe was the Apostle Paul trying to tell us. How can there be a book in the Bible? We say we don't know who wrote it. At least, okay, the Holy Ghost inspired it. The Holy Ghost wrote it. But the man who wrote it, I believe, was Paul. There were good reasons why he did not do it the way he did all his letters. Uh, but boldly. So we should therefore come boldly. The boldly. The Greek word boldly there is Pahisia. P-A-R-R-O-H-E-S-I-A. Parisia. What does it mean? It means to come all outspokenly. Outspokenly. All outspokenly. To come in full assurance. To come in full confidence. Frankness. It also means bluntness. To come in full assurance, full confidence, full outspokenness. In the English language, boldness means to have no fear. It means not afraid of danger or difficult situation. Not afraid of danger or difficult situation. It also means showing confidence in a way that seems rude or foolish. 
showing confidence in a way that seems rude or foolish. Hallelujah. That is boldness. So that when you combine the Greek and the, the English, it means to come in full assurance, in full confidence, with all frankness and bluntness, showing confidence in a way that seems rude or foolish, and not fearing any danger or any difficulty as you come. Hallelujah. But my brothers and my sisters, look at the way he said we should come. How can a mortal man live in such a way that you can come before a holy God with such boldness? How is it possible for a man to have boldness before a holy God? A mortal man like you and I, it is only possible when we come in his gift of righteousness. Hallelujah. It is only possible if we come not in our own righteousness, but we come in his righteousness. In Proverbs chapter 28, the verse number 1, The wicked flees when no man pursueth, but the righteous is as bold as a lion. My brothers and my sisters, you know, the boldness of the righteous only comes from the righteousness of the lion of the tribe of Judah. Let me, I said the boldness of the righteous man. It's not from him. We are bold because the boldness of a certain lion is in us. And that boldness is the boldness of the lion of the tribe of Judah. If you receive his righteousness, which is a gift, it gives you certain boldness to dare believe the too good to be true news of God. And it gives you certain boldness even before a holy God. Why? Because he is the lion of the tribe of Judah. That is why it is said that the righteous is as bold as a lion. Which lion? Specific lion. The lion. Who is the lion of the tribe of Judah? Hallelujah. This boldness is something that we receive from our Jesus so we come in Jesus' righteousness. We come in his place because he took our place. Hallelujah. We come in Jesus' place. My brothers and my sisters, you can only come boldly if you come in Jesus' place. In your place, you cannot come boldly. How can I come boldly when I am not a perfect Christian? Who is a perfect Christian here? There is no perfect bishop there is no perfect archbishop and there is no perfect Christian. And when I say perfection here, I'm talking about perfection in maturity, in understanding and in our flesh, in our behavior. There's no perfection, but in our spirit, there is, there is, there is perfection. Hallelujah. How can I come before God when I am not perfect? How can you be bold before God? You realize that even your wife or your, your a human being, if you lie against your boss or your mother and you are standing before them and you are aware of your lie or your imperfection, you don't have boldness. Hallelujah. Have you realized? You'll be saying that thing, but one cast out your own mouth and one popo on that one who put me from foam. The boldness is absent. Why? Because there is weakness and imperfection present with you and in your consciousness. How much more you come before a holy God? How can you stand before him blameless and to have that confidence to the point that it looks like you are being rude? Romans chapter 5 verse 2. By whom also we have access by faith into his grace. By whom we have access only by faith into his grace. So we have access not by what we have done, but we have access by faith. And this faith is a righteousness of faith that gives us access to his grace. Hallelujah. We come boldly because we don't come to God by how we have lived. If it is by how we have lived, we will always fall short and we cannot get anything from him. 
We come boldly because we come to God by faith and by the blood of Jesus. We come boldly because we come by faith and we come by the blood. And we never come by how we have lived, either good or bad. Listen, we don't come by how we have lived, either good or bad. We come by the blood and we come by faith. Hallelujah. That is the only way you can be bold. You cannot come with boldness before God because you have built a, 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 a church building for a church. Eh? That cannot give you this boldness and full assurance. Not by anything we have done, but by what his son has done for us. Hallelujah. My brothers and my sisters, we walk on this earth with this righteousness, consciousness, in all boldness every time you approach God. Not only here on earth, but on the day of judgment, I will be bold. I have boldness. I have no fear for the day of judgment because First John 4, 17. See something here. Love has been perfected among us. Has love been perfected among us? That we may have boldness even in the day of judgment. Why? Because I am righteous as he is. I am going to be judged by a God who has gifted me with his righteousness. As he is, so am I in this world. The consciousness of this righteousness does not only give me boldness on this earth when I go before God, but it is that same boldness with which I await the day of judgment. Who, how, how bold can you be on the day of judgment? Even the day you write exams. And the day they are come to give your report, your exams report. Are you bold? Even if you wrote, there's a certain boldness that you cannot have. Because a man has assessed you. How can you have boldness on the day of accountability? You are a salesman. You are, you are a true appraiser about your behavior. Terminal report. There's always some form of anxiety and uncertainty. But the Bible says on the judgment day, we will have boldness because we have lived right. Watch this. What the Bible What tell the Bible? Why will I have boldness on the judgment day? Because I was a pastor. Because I didn't lie to the church of God. Because I preached the gospel. Because I did evangelism. Because I built a friend is sent for the church. Because I gave money. Every Sunday my offering was 1,000 Ghana cities. So I have boldness. I stopped lying. I was not chasing women. I didn't have a side chick. Or an up or a down chick. I had only one wife. And I never cheated on her. So I have boldness on the judgment day. Why will we have boldness? Why? Because what? He is coming to judge himself. And I know how he will treat himself. Some people have believed a gospel that is taking them in the judgment day because of their track record. They are so deceived. We have born because of that righteousness. So when you are conscious of this righteousness, you come before God with boldness. And if you don't have boldness today in prayer, when you come before God, you cannot have it on the judgment day. Hallelujah. So when you come before God in prayer, don't, have, don't, don't be afraid that your sins and your weaknesses will be exposed. Because Jesus has removed them. Before God, he sees you as clean and perfect and holy. He dealt with the same problem on the cross. God has not even seen a speck of sin in you because his, his son's blood has washed it away. Hallelujah. Now, what do you find when we come? Now you have come boldly because you understand that you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And you have a perfect record before God today, tomorrow, and forever. So when you are come, you are coming on the record of Jesus. What is a perfect record? Because he took your place on the cross and you are in his place and you are coming. Now, when you have come, what do you find? What do you find when you come? My brothers and my sisters, you see, if you come by your works, there's something that you find. But look at what you find. 
that you may obtain what? Mercy. Mercy first. That you may obtain mercy. What is mercy? Kind of forgiving treatment of someone who could have been treated harshly. That is, that is mercy. Go back to Hebrews. We find mercy when we come before God without boldness. We find mercy. And that mercy is a kind of forgiving treatment to someone who could have been treated harshly. Or kindness or help to a people or someone in a very bad situation. It is a kind treatment given to somebody in a bad treat, uh, situation. So when we come before God, we find mercy. And mercy means that we don't get what we deserve. When we come before God, we don't get what we deserve. What we deserve is punishment because he is holy and perfect. When we come, we deserve condemnation. When we come before God, what you deserve actually is condemnation, rejection. Why? Because he's perfect and holy. So when you come, the first thing you obtain is mercy. Mercy, no chance. You won't get what you deserve. Hallelujah. Are you following? And if, 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 when you come and you look at your sin, then you deserve sickness. You deserve poverty. You deserve failure. You deserve, you even deserve death. Because you cannot survive by your own self a second in the presence of God. When we come, we deserve death. But when we come, because we have not come in our own account, we don't get what we deserve. We get mercy. Hallelujah. And then after getting mercy, we see over there that we get, then we find grace. And what is that grace? God's grace is, is God's riches at Christ's expense. God's riches at Christ's expense. Grace is God's unearned, undeserved, and unmerited favor. So this grace also stands over there in this text to represent what we get. Mercy has told us what we will not get. We don't get that. But the grace is telling us that we get what we, the good that we don't deserve. So in the mercy of God, we escape the bad that we deserve. And then the, the grace will bring in the good that we don't deserve. Which is health, protection. Anything that you need that you went in there for, you don't deserve it. Because of how you have lived. You don't deserve it. But the grace of God makes it available. We get good success. If it is money you need, you get it. If it is favor you need, you get it. If it is, if it is anything, think about it. You get it because the grace of God is available. Why? Because Christ has paid for us to get them. Hallelujah. My brothers and my sisters, when we look at the things we obtain and we find when we go before God, you won't come with your works. You see, when, if we went there by how we have lived and by our own righteousness and by our performance, what we will get will not be mercy and grace. It would have been wages. If you are going by what you have done, you have worked. So God must pay you. Listen, listen to what I'm teaching. If you are going by how you have lived and what you have done, I swept the church, I did this, then God is going to pay you. But when we go to God, we don't go and receive salary. He is not your employer. We don't go and receive wages. God doesn't have a minimum wage. Eh? You don't work in his company. You are his child. Hallelujah. So when we go, if we go by our works, what we will obtain will not be grace or mercy. It will have been wages. But we don't go to God for wages. We go to him for grace and for mercy. Hallelujah. My brothers and my sisters, if you are going to God any day and you are not going for grace, stop it. Because he's got nothing for you apart from grace and mercy. That is why you have to go 
boldly. And you have to go in the consciousness of the righteousness that he has given you. Hallelujah. In 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7 to 8, every man talking about how we give unto God. When we give anything to God, let's look at how he gives back unto us. What he gives back. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7 and 8. Every man should give, of course, according to, according as he has purposed in his heart. So let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. Verse 8, and God is able to make all grace abound towards you. God is able to make all grace abound towards you. After you have given, what God gives to you is grace. Because he has given you grace in Christ. When he wanted to give to you, he gave you Jesus. And that is grace. Hallelujah. He gives grace. Do we not read in the book of James that God resists the proud. And he gives grace to the humble. Listen, God is not your uncle. God is not your employer. God is not a man. Men give you things. My brothers and my sisters, God must be God. And he must be in his own class. Distinct. Giving us things that men cannot give us. No man can give you grace. On earned, unmerited, undeserved favor. Men don't give like that. But when God gives you grace, then that grace positions you to receive things from men. Get that distinction clear. What you must be worried about, if there's anything, if there should be any worry in your life, is how you can get more grace from God. Because the man that God's grace and mercy has located, men cannot reject. Hallelujah. One day the apostle Paul came to God in prayer several times in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 8 and 9. He had a problem. He came boldly to God. He came with all confidence to God. The Bible said that he prayed unto the Lord three times. Concerning that, and I plead with the Lord three times that it, might be that it might depart from me. But he said, my grace is sufficient for you. Paul, my grace is sufficient for you. The thing about the grace of God is that when there's a difficulty, you go to him and he gives you grace. He gives you grace. To, to, to endure. He gives you grace. The people sometimes only think that grace only brings. No, grace stabilizes you. It gives you stability. It gives you the ability to endure. The patience to wait. Grace positions you and gives you the right posture and comp uh, uh, and, 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 and uh, position you well so that you will not misbehave and you behave well until that same grace supplies what you need. So when you go to God, he gives you grace. You pray three times, you pray four times, you went boldly. He doesn't have a car for you. He doesn't have a husband for you. I have grace, do you want it? Said so this grace is sufficient. Money is not sufficient. Don't believe a lie and don't be deceived. Money cannot bring grace, but grace can bring money. But all these things are possible when we go in the consciousness of the gift of righteousness. And so we are so bold that he heard us and he will give unto us and he will give us something that is called the grace of God. When you find this grace before God, men will bring the things you need to you. Listen, God does not give you things. He is not a natural God. He's a supernatural God. Everything he gives you is spiritual. It is grace and mercy. Cleanse you of the bad that you deserve from him and even from men. Mercy. And then the grace will set you up to receive what you don't deserve. Hallelujah. He said, my grace is sufficient for you. And this morning, no matter what you are going through, he sent me to tell you that his grace is sufficient for you. His grace is sufficient for you. We don't come to God to get what we deserve. What we deserve is death. 
But we come to God to receive grace. We don't come to receive reward for our good works. We don't come to receive reward for our good works. You see, the thing about rewards, now listen to me. If God must reward you for your good works, always remember that he must also reward you for your bad works. Don't you want God to reward you for Jesus' good works on the cross? Will that not get you more? And the reward for Jesus' good works on the cross is grace. Hallelujah. If God must give to you because you gave money, okay, then he must also give you something for that lie. Hallelujah. And by the time he gives you that thing for that lie, you will not be alive to receive the reward for the money. <laughs> Hallelujah. So come boldly because he loves you. God loves you so passionately. He loves you unconditionally. He has such an undying love for you. And he gave you himself and his very nature. Hallelujah. So when we come to God, the help that God gives us in the time of need is grace and mercy. So I will show you mercy. So I will show mercy unto whom I show mercy. Grace and mercy is the help that God gives that no man can give unto us. And that grace and that mercy is what positions us for the answer. But understand that before you can get that grace and mercy, you must come boldly. And the only way you can come boldly is when you come on the record of his son. Listen, we preach Christ and what he has done we exalt his finished work and not our dead works. We exalt what he has done. And that is what gives us the impetus and the confidence to come before a holy God any day, any time with confidence. And this is the confidence we have in First John 5 verse 14. And this is the confidence that we have in him. How can you be confident before God? Even me, a man, your pastor, Sometimes because of your bad, bad things, you don't come near pastor. Maybe the adventure, I pick the thing. You are not confident before prophets. Who have sh God who gave the prophetic gift. <laughs> God is not a prophet though. He is God. You know people who have pastors who are prophets. When, 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 they, are, when they do bad, bad things, <laughs> you know, no confidence. Because they think that the prophet will pick what they have done. And prophet who only see bad, bad things. Hey. Now this is the confidence we have. That when we ask, do you ask God confidently? Or when you are asking God, you know, when you start your prayer with confession of sins, you see, when you start your prayer, you confess your sins. You see, what is giving you confidence is the sin that you have confessed. So because you confess your sin, that confidence has come. Not because of what gives you confidence before God. Jesus. Don't say in the name of Jesus. Lord, I need a breakthrough. 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 breakthrough break in. Break out. In the name of my height. In the name of my record, in the name of my mother's prayer, in the name of my good record. If you end in the name of Jesus, then you should have been confident. Then you should have been bold. Listen, the things we ask God, eh? Listen, you see, the, what you are asking God will even determine whether you are bold or not. Are you able to ask God for big, 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 big things? See, God is not me. When I go to him, go and, go and, go and be asking God, how, do you, how is your prayer? How do you ask God? One day, a man prayed and asked God for nation. John Knox. Or say, give me Scotland. Or, or that, or take my life. Are you asking God for Ghana or you want daily bread? 
No kofi, oh God. No kofi, oh God. My job. You see, you're not praying for eternal things. God, give us big farm. So praying for big, big things. You just want a car. Go and get a job. Work hard. You get a car. Huh? Things that unbelievers get without prayer has filled your prayer. Like God is a man. God is not a man. The wisdom. You are praying for wisdom. You are praying for a passion, an undying passion for souls. Something that is eternal and can change the destinies of men and nations. But you are so filled with butter and bread. Butter, my beer, sugar, my cocoa. There are so, so wonders. Jesus said do. Hey! Butter, my beer, sugar. You see, you come. I'll butter it for you. You see, come. Go to Melia. He will do it for you. You don't need boldness for things like this. Say, so God, I want to build. I want to build it. Things that you, as you are sitting here, listen, what your, are your prayers? You see, your, you must be sure that your prayers are not at your level. All your prayers are according to your, your money. You are not even, how many of you have prayed to God, I want to buy a land for this church at airport residential? It's $2 million. Even this week, I asked for one. Are you, you look at yourself right now and you are praying the prayers and you are believing God for those things with such boldness. It cannot be coming from the boldness of the Lion of the tribe of Judah. Who is your righteousness? You want to buy a mic for us. God bless you. Buy it. We need mics. But there are people that want to do bigger things than where they are now. It shows at the level of your faith. You have a bold, reckless faith that can believe God for things. And that's faith I'm talking about are things, are, 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 are the faith that we don't, that is not selfish. When your prayer is always about you, 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 you alone, do you have faith to believe for the entire church, for your entire family, for the country and the continent of Ghana? Faith to ask God for big things because you come with boldness and you know that God is not given to you by your record. If it's by my record, my record can only supply for me. But with Jesus' record, what I can get in Jesus' name can affect and must affect nations. Brothers and my sisters, it doesn't mean that if you need a lace for your shoe, don't ask God. You see, the lace for your shoe, eh? Sly, you ask Sly. But you can ask God. He cares. Listen, he cares about your lace. He cares about your lace. He cares about everything about you. But I came to tell you that you need, you need some confidence before God. Are you confident when you go to God? Or when you go to God, you think that God will remember that thing that you did. That thing that you did. He doesn't deal with you like that. Come on Jesus' record and ask with boldness. And I see God supplying all your needs. You see, he doesn't supply according to your salary. He supplies according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus, which can only be assessed by faith. Young men and women, this is predominantly a youthful church. Young men and women, can you begin to believe God for big things? Say, if you have a plan and you know how to execute the vision that you have, it's not God given. God give visions and God give him passion will always require him and his grace and strength to, 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 to do. That I have a dream. I have a dream. I have a dream that no child of mine will be wayward. But no child of mine will become a homosexual. I don't have the strength to make that happen. That every child of mine will be godly. Big dreams that I cannot accomplish. The dream is so big, I submit it to God and his grace for its manifestations. I have a dream. What is your dream? What is your prayer? And how confident are you with that prayer? God said that, listen, I have plenty of 
and I bring it on time in the amplified version of our anchor scripture as we close. God, I see God bringing you help just when you need it. Timely help is coming unto you because you haven't gone to receive it by your grace and your your by your by your record. Timely help, timely help in the amplified version. What what we have found is grace. What we have obtained is mercy. It makes such a sharp difference in our lives. Men don't understand. When we find mercy for our failures, then grace will rush in and bring God's help in good time for every single need. And I pray over this congregation that for every single need, God has abundant grace to supply it. Appropriate help is coming to you in the name of Jesus. And it's a well-timed help. No help that will come after you know God is not a man who will say, Ah, God is not like that. Any time and any day you come to him and you come in the righteousness of his son and you come not by your record because he so loved his son like how he loves you. He loves you so much he died for you. There's nothing good he will withhold from you. And I see God bringing on to each and everyone who believes one time help coming just when you need it one time healing and restoration coming just when you need it it is coming it is here not because we are good but because jesus is good we have come fearlessly not fearing judgment we have come confidently not fearing judgment and we have come boldly father you loved us this thing seems to be delaying but we have come we have come let us then come because in the preceding verses we have a high priest who can be touched with the feeling of our infirmities he's been like me before he know it's not easy he was without sin and his record has become my record it is perfect so when I ask I know I receive slide receive it receive it How we receive it? Because Jesus' record is our record. He was without sin. And so we receive it. Listen. Stop asking God to butter your bread and sugar your cocoa. Ask God for things for your generations. Praying for your grandchildren. Praying for churches. We are here and you are praying for churches in China. We are praying for churches in Egypt. We are praying for Turkey. And we are praying for Jerusalem. We are praying for Ghana. And we are praying for intangible things that only God can do. Because we know that every single big or small thing concerning us, He has dealt with it and He has supplied. Come boldly. Who is thirsty? He said, Come and drink. Did He not say in Isaiah? Chapter, chapter 55 that who is thirsty come come and drink you see we don't pay God does not pay because he does not hire he saves he has saved he didn't hire you you are not working for him and Isaiah chapter 50 he said come the drink we come to drink from God is grace he said come and buy with that money come and buy without your record come and buy without righteousness come and buy without your goodness come and buy in my account and on my account the goodness of my son oh ho oh, i don't understand this whole oh, ho oh, everyone who is thirsty come come to the waters come 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 you who have no money you who have weaknesses you who have sin you who have freighters you who don't have a name you who don't have a good record, come. You are the reason I came. So come. Come. You don't have money. Don't think you cannot build a house. You don't have money. Don't think nothing good can come out of you. 
Can anything good come out of Zion? Can anything good come from your hometown? Come and see. Come and see. Hold oh, the Lord had made from this boy who is not so wise. Come. Will you come? How can you come and buy? And how can you eat? Without money, without price, because the price has been paid. His son paid the price, so because we can't pay the price, come, come. He knows you. Listen, maybe me, if I get to know how bad you are, I will not ask you to come. I'll close my door. But he who knows how bad you are, how weak you are, he knows how failed. He said, come, I know you, I know you, I know you. I know you, come. Come. Men have rejected you, so come. Come, will you come? And don't come like this. Don't come like a boy who has gone to play football at the, I mean, at the, against the instruction of the mother and is coming home around 6 30. And on an touch line. God, I am coming. God, can you see me? God, I am coming. I say, come boldly. Say, come, come boldly. Come boldly. Come boldly. Come boldly. Father, I have come. Come boldly. Don't come crying. Wipe your tears. I know. I know you blew it. But come. Give you a second chance. I'll give you a third chance. I'll give you a, a fourth chance. I can give you a thousand chance. Come. 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 Don't run away. You have seen and so what? Sorry, Gina. Come. Come in confidence. Because he's not dealing with you according to your performance. Can you not see if God was with you? You will not be alive. Listen, Sly, you will not be here. Listen, if you are dealing with you according to your performance, you will not be here. Have you forgotten that he's not dealing with you according to your performance? So come. Everybody come. We don't want to I want you to close this and make that request before the Lord. Without your money, I know you have money, but put it aside. Listen, this grace and this mercy of God, it is for those who it is for those who do not have money. Open your mouth, lift up your voice, and ask the Lord.